think I ought to say anything. <laughs> what else can I say? That was my speech. I wrote that speech. But Bobby Kennedy did a great job in delivering it, and I thank him so much for the introduction. Woo! But more than that, I thank him for his lifetime dedication to environmental protection. He is a great champion. I certainly want to thank uh, Gene and Tony for opening up their cottage for this event. <laughs> Is there more than just this tent? I think there was some. This is really, you've been very generous, supportive of the environment, UCLA, all sorts of great causes, and I thank you so much. And I also want to acknowledge and introduce my incredible wife and partner, Janet. Over here. It's an honor to accept this award from UCLA, Institute of Environment. Uh, brings, uh, the Institute brings together experts for uh, interdisciplinary approach to solving our environmental problems. I went to UCLA for seven years, four uh, undergraduate, three law school, and uh, I, 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 I'm thankful for my education, and I'm very, very grateful this, for this award as well. Uh, it's one of the reasons that UCLA is training the leaders of tomorrow that we will uh, count on to uh, continue the progress we've made to protect the environment. I'm being honored, I know, for my accomplishments as a member of Congress, and I've been in Congress for 40 years, so I want to take this opportunity to share some thoughts about that period of time. It's so easy for people to be negative about politicians, electoral politics, and government. They see the gridlock Congress, vicious political attack ads, and halting progress on climate change. I can get discouraged too. But then I remind myself that it's never easy to pass legislation. Government can be a tremendous force for good in people's lives, but it takes commitment and perseverance to pass major legislation. That's true when you're in the majority, it's true when you're in the, major in the minority. It, by the way, it's better to be in the majority. <laughs> but a good example is the Clean Air Act. I worked for nearly a decade to pass the law in 1990. In the early 1980s, uh, President Reagan and his administration made an alliance with the chairman of my committee Democratic chairman, John Deagle of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, they proposed a law that would have eviscerated the health-based standards and the very purpose of the Clean Air Act. And we had to fight back those efforts. And then after we defeated that, we had to start every year to try to move things forward, working to build support for a stronger bill it took years, but when our moment came in 1989 and 1990, under the presidency of George H.W. Bush, we passed a law that was much stronger than any bill we had even proposed the Congresses before. The 1990 law was landmark legislation that established programs to deal with urban smog, hazardous air pollutants, acid rain, and the depletion of the stratos stratospheric ozone layer, ozone layer. It's been called the most effective environmental law ever written. I'm proud of what that law has done. Clean <laughs> air pollutants have been reduced by two thirds while the economy has more than tripled in size. The law has had a huge impact throughout the country. Fewer missed school days, fewer illnesses, fewer premature deaths because of breathing in and being affected by these pollutants. I have a similar experience on many other issues as well. Bobby talked about the, about the, the tobacco fight. Uh, I had the CEOs of the tobacco industry come and take the oath. They would tell the truth and immediately lie. Oh no, cigarettes don't cause poor health. Nicotine is not addictive. We don't manipulate the nicotine. We certainly don't go after kids. Well, these tobacco executives testified and uh, we saw something new about the tobacco industry, men in suits telling us things that were unbelievable because they weren't true. 
but it took 14 years after that hearing before we passed law, the law to give the FDA the authority to regulate tobacco, which was signed by President Obama in his first year in office. In the environmental area, we worked on the Drinking Water Act, the, uh, we worked on trying to take lead out of the air, the water, the exposures to kids, and even in the toys that they uh, play with. Uh, getting lead uh, exposure ended is so important because a lot of pollutants we think can be harmful over a period of time, but lead with a child can cause immediate, immediate impact of learning disabilities if not more serious consequences. Well, in retrospect, these actions may seem common sense. We take for granted so many of the laws that are in place. But just like today, it was hard to make progress. It was hard to clean up the air, clean up the water, reduce exposure to lead. The special interests fought us every step of the way. It took dedicated public servants in the Congress, both sides of the aisle, a supportive public to get the job done. And now we face the biggest challenge of all, climate change. I'm optimistic about what we could do to address climate change. It's not going to be because of Congress, because Congress is not going to be part of the solution for a while. Unfortunately, the Republicans who run the House won't even acknowledge the science or the existence of the problem. But the good news is that President Obama does not need Congress to act. He has the broad authority under the Clean Air Act and other laws to move forward on his own. And I believe he has a strong commitment to act in this area. But he's going to need a lot of support. He's going to need a lot of support from the states. And that's why I'm so proud of our state of California for taking a leadership role in the fight on climate change. Like so many times before, California is confronting its challenges as a and as a result is leading the nation. And what gives the edge to our state is institutions like UCLA. We all need to be learning from what is happening here at UCLA and across California. And that makes me especially, especially honored to be with you tonight. I'm grateful for the recognition you've given me. Uh, I, even more so for all the crucial work that you are doing at the Institute at UCLA uh, for our uh, protection of the environment, to saving the planet, to making literally this a better and more healthy life for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you so much.